Hello and welcome to the channel where we we'll talk about all things vice charts and chill with friends. My name is Liam and today I want to talk about my predictions for the BCS 2023 World Finals. Now if you are new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button and if you enjoy what we do here, please let me know by hitting that like button. As well as that, check out my other socials on Twitch, on X and on Discord. Links are down in the description below. But let's jump straight in. So this weekend on the 3rd of February, the BCS or Bushy Road Championship Series 2023 World Finals will be happening in Akihabara, Tokyo, Japan. And at those finals, we will see players from Cardfight Vanguard, Shadowverse Evolve, and of course, Weisschwarz, all competing for that champion title. And in this video, I want to share my thoughts on what I expect to see at the World Finals in terms of what titles and what decks might be played for Weisschwarz, as well as what I expect to take the champion title. Now, the first thing I want to say is a massive best of luck to all players taking part, but specifically to four of my good friends that have all qualified. Firstly, Dario, moderator of the channel, uh, owner of the channel. <laughs> also, he qualified by finishing first at Cardiff. Talking of Cardiff, Nendo, who finished second, also qualified. And also my good friends Diogo and Kevin, who both qualified at other European BCSs. I wish you four specifically the absolute best of luck. But as I already said, good luck to every player taking part in the World Finals. Now with that stuff out of the way, let's jump into what I expect to see at the World Finals and what do I expect to take the win? Now, actually, first of all, I'm gonna talk about a set that is definitely not going to be at the World Finals, despite the fact it has now been released, Spy Family. Spy Family was released on the 26th of January, 2023, which as a result of the rules put for the English edition of Weisschwarz, there must be a two week cooldown period before a set can be used in a competitive tournament. With that happening and with that cooldown in place, that means that the two week period does not end until after the world finals for Spy Family. And as a result, despite the set being one that I very much expect to be very relevant in the English meta when it comes out, it will not appear at the world finals. Just putting it out there. Moving on to the sets I actually expect to see. First of all, we have to talk about Slime. Slime, even though it got hit in the restriction list, is still an extremely good deck. Yes, you can't run the Shizu and Muran combos in the same deck. However, as we saw towards the later end of the regionals for this series, you know, we're seeing people running Standby Muran, Two Soul Muran. Muran is such a good combo that it's still being used, even though the most efficient way of running the deck has been stopped. As well as that, the fact that, you know, the level three late game are all off climax finishers is just really, really good. So you can focus on that early to mid game combos, um, all that resource generation, just to be able to go absolutely ham uh, with your level three off finishers. It's still an extremely good deck and very much expect to see plenty of representation for Slime. Another title that I expect a large representation for is of course, Hololive Production. Hololive, you know, it's got many fantastic decks that can be run, and the three that we've seen quite a bit of has been Aski Gura, Aski Polka, and also Chloe Marine. Um, and also another one to talk about, Canter Marine. I still think Canter Marine is still good in the current meta. Whilst maybe not as good as the other three, um, I still think that Canter Marine might be played. It's still a solid deck. Um, but overall, Hololive, extremely good level zero game some really good mid-level game, and probably the most resource efficient finisher in the game in Marine, or the most potent finisher in the game at the moment in Gura, I think it's a no-brainer that we're going to see plenty of whole live lists. Moving on to our first English original that I expect to see here, Avatar The Last Airbender. Now, bar standby, Toph Azula, extremely good deck and with the slime restriction list i just think it makes avatar stand up that little bit more so i also expect to see a fair few avatar players and it'll be interesting to see what level zero lineups are used to try and potentially deal with the mirror match as well as how to deal with the rest of the world finals meta if you will the next english original we do talk about is seven deadly sins specifically looking at the hendrickson level three finisher on the gate with the Elizabeth level zero stock soul. Escanor using the choice combo, yes, it's pretty good, of course it is. However, 
the Hendrickson Level 3 from Set 1 has been really showing its worth in the current English meta. And I do think that we are going to see a fair few lists running that endgame. I think it's really, really good. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it even top. Uh, we've seen a lot of tops in the regionals. And will it convert to a world final top? Very possibly. Moving on to the next post set, in my opinion, I think Overlord might see a couple of representations now. It's not had the best top finishing during regionals, sure. However, with Slime being restricted and no longer as potent as it was, I do think that, you know, Overlord might see something. However, the thing that's really stopping Overlord in the current meta is the 2 1 Shuna Hexproof from Tensura. And, you know, I think that in itself probably will reduce the number of Overlord players at the world final to very low single digits, if at all. But Overlord might still show up. It's still a very good set. And another set that I think is also going to show up is Quint Central Quintuplets. And obviously, there are the three main decks that are being run around the current meta We've got Ichika and 8 Choice, Nino, 8 Standby, and Itsuki, 8 Door. Now, which one of those three do I think is going to see the most representation? Probably Nino. Purely because I know there's going to be definitely one player playing Nino. Let's be honest. Um, and if you know their content, you'll know who that player is. <laughs> um, so Nino is basically guaranteed to get at least one representation. Um, but Ichika is a good anti-meta choice, but I don't think it's the strongest deck. And Itsuki is so high rolly in the sense of if the deck needs to go, if you want the deck to go well, your level one combo needs to hit every single time and give you the card you actually need rather than random discard fodder. You know, the odd bit of discard fodder or clock fodder, sure, fine. But it needs to, like two of the three cards that you hit need to be cards you actually need for your next turn. And that element of luck, I think, is too risky at the World Finals. But who knows? High risk, high reward, right? Moving on to a couple of rogue decks that might show up. First of all, Azure Lane. The Cats level zeros, the one that brings out the level zero uh, from deck, uh, and the one that then because it gives that a soul, and then the other one that gives the other a soul. The fact that you can just do some real massive like soul rushing at the very beginning of the game and quite easily in Azure Lane. I think the meta at the moment is very much supporting and it emphasizes the potential benefits of a soul rush build um so you know azure lane could very well do quite well um and i do think the build for azure lane to go with at the moment is the level zero bar combo into the level three trial deck door combo i think it's bismarck if i remember correctly um i think that deck is probably the way to go if you are going to play azure lane but again i think ultimately it's the level zeros that make azure lane so good and a really good like rogue deck choice where if you're able to soul rush your opponent enough to the point where they can't respond or can't react, you can just take games and you can just snowball that way. So as you're in, it's something that players do have to consider. Another rogue deck that is more than likely going to show up because it always does is Bang Dream. Now you could go eight door running the set one Christmas Casimir combo into the fifth anniversary level three star Casimi combo. You could go into the, from the level one uh, Yukina combo from anniversary set. You could go into the pants side of things and run the level three Yukina. You could, there's so much you can do with Bang Dream right now. You've got the choice build as well, running the level one uh, canon uh, from Hello Happy World into Kasumi, into the new level 3 Yukina. There's so much potential that Bang Dream has just because of the arsenal the set has. Bang Dream is always a deck that you have to be wary of. And again, it could just show up and perform very well. And the final set that we need to discuss is Guilty Gear Strive, the brand new English original that came to Weishwart back in December last year. And let's be honest, like Guilty Gear Strive, I think people have come to the opinion that at the moment at least, it's not really that good of a set. However, I have been seeing topping lists using six standby and two of a finisher, whether it be two bar in the Ram Lethal or Ram Fall, or they're running the choice level three combo, which is the May, and then running the standby engine with the Ino. Like, Guilty Gear Strive has the potential to do really well. And not only that as well, given that Guilty Street bleh, and not only that as well, given that Guilty Gear Strive is a brand new set that has not got any BCS regional data at all, it could be one of those boogie sets that just does extremely well, similar to Seven Deadly Sins at last year's World Finals. The thing with Seven Deadly Sins is that it also had a set that was also very good to support the fact it was a brand new set. Guilty Gear Strive, I'm not sure, but there could be a deck that 
someone's managed to whip together something totally out there and it could do very very well the level one pants combo is extremely good the level three door combo in the soul very good there could be a build out there that we could see that surprises everyone so i'm excited to see what guilty gear strive gets played and to see how well it does but ultimately if i was to pick a deck that i think is going to win the world finals i genuinely think hollow Knight. i really do i think slime is a fantastic deck right now but with the restrictions it does slow it down just a little bit and i think hollow Live has more answers to slime than slime has answers to hollow Live. and when i talk about hollow Live, the deck that i would choose to play is probably chloe marine now let me explain why the level zero utility of whole life in general extremely good especially in the eight door build especially if you're running the uh the resonance package with the rui with the laplace there's loads of synergy around that obviously you've got you know the rainy the level zero the rico clone which is extremely good the mio drop search you've still got the the aqua clone in laplace and that's extremely good you can go as aggro as you want with that deck you can go slightly differently with it you could potentially i don't know there's so much you could do with whole life especially with those level zeros that could just blow everything out of water. Not only that as well, the Chloe combo itself is extremely good with some fantastic synergy with the set in terms of being able to constantly check the top of your deck to make sure you're hitting with the Chloe combo. Just the fact you can salvage anything you want as well is really, really good. And again, yes, it's a resonance, but getting that resonant target to your hand the plus level three is not difficult. I think Chloe is probably one of the best level one combos in the game right now. Moving on to level two game, again, you can just focus on your Chloe's. You can also use the Anus to make sure you're constantly recycling your climaxes. And then obviously you go into your Marine level three game, which is, in my opinion, at the moment, the most potent resource efficient finisher in the game. And like I said, you can literally do everything, something at every level with her, that deck and you know i don't think people are expecting it to do too well i honestly think it will take i really think it will take the win and if hololive doesn't it'll probably be slime or probably be avatar but my bets would be on hololive but that's it for my predictions and what i think will take the crown but more importantly what do you guys think i'm really curious to see what you guys think let me know in the comments below what sets do you expect to see what sets that i haven't discussed do you think might make an appearance at the world finals and also, what title do you think will become champion of BCS 2023 World Finals? Let me know in the comments below. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you are new here, please hit that subscribe button. If you enjoy what we do here, please hit that like button. And, you know, as always, check out my other socials on Twitch, on X, and on Discord. Those links are down below. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye!